So, first of all, operant conditioning is, again, another type of learning, so uh, just like classical conditioning. But this time, um, a behavior is increased by a reinforcer or decreased by punishment. So, operant conditioning is um, going to be where something actually follows a behavior, whereas with classical conditioning, um, you had a stimulus and a response. Um, this we actually have um, a reinforcer uh, or punishment that follows behavior. So the psychologist that is associated with this is B.F. Skinner. Um, B.F. Skinner um, had the Skinner box. Okay? Um, Skinner kind of expanded on um, Thorndike's ideas. Um, Thorndike um, had the idea of the law of effect. Um, he said that the law of effect is basically the idea that um, if you have something that's good that happens after a behavior, it's going to increase the chances that that behavior is going to happen. And if it's a behavior is followed by something that's bad that people don't like, it's going to make that behavior less likely to happen. So B.F. Skinner kind of went off from Thorndike's ideas, um, <coughs> and he created um, what he called the operant chamber, and he called it an operant chamber. Um, after that, people call it the Skinner box um, to shape the behavior of rats. Um, so the box basically, and I wish I had a picture on here, I should put that on there. Um, the box basically um, has this uh, lever that um, he wants um, a rat to kind of press down on to receive food. So what Skinner did was is that um, he shaped the behavior of the rat, where he actually went and at first when the rat gets in there, um, as it gets closer to the bar, he would dispense food. Okay, um, so then the the rat would be like, hey, this is a good deal. I'll get closer to this bar more often. And every time he got closer to the bar, um, he'd have to get closer and closer to the bar to be able to get the food. And then in order to get the food, he'd have to go and put his foot or his paw on the bar. Then Skinner would give him the food. Then the rat would actually have to push down on the bar to be able to get the food. And so this is kind of shaping process. Um, Skinner would be shaping the behavior of the rat. Now, um, what Skinner found was is that um, these reinforcers um, were anything that increases the frequency of behavior. So um, he said that there were two types of reinforcers, positive reinforcers and negative reinforcers. And <coughs> both of them would increase the frequency of a behavior. So a positive reinforcer is going to be when um, there's a pleasurable stimulus after a behavior. So think about this. Um, you know, parents use these, teachers use these, you know, uh, how can I reward you for taking your notes while this video is running? Um, I could give you candy. Uh, I could um, give you points. I give you points for your notebook. I give you extra credit points, right? Uh, those things uh, would be positive reinforcers. Have you ever had this uh, when you were a, um, a little kid, maybe in elementary school? You get stickers or a stamp. Excellent. Good job. Way to go. Right? Those are positive reinforcers. They don't even necessarily have to be tangible items. It's just somebody saying, hey, you know what? You're doing a really good job. You know, that's a positive reinforcer. It doesn't have to be huge. Okay? Uh, but Skinner maintained that uh, positive reinforcement had a greater impact than negative reinforcement or punishment. Negative reinforcement, by the way, is when you remove something that's undesirable. <coughs> <coughs> Ooh, like removing my cough. Um, no. So negative reinforcement, for example, uh, for parents, okay, uh, the baby won't stop crying. Oh my gosh, this baby won't stop crying. No one thing I do, it's not hungry, it's not Change his diaper. You check all these things. Why? To stop the baby from crying. You give the baby a pacifier. The baby stops crying. Oh, negative reinforcement. I'm going to do that next time. I'm going to put that pacifier in that baby's mouth. Increases the likelihood of me putting a pacifier in the baby's mouth. Okay? So it doesn't matter if it's a positive reinforcer or a negative reinforcer. Both of them increases the frequency of the behavior. Okay, so positive reinforcement, my example was to get you take notes. Negative reinforcement to get uh, me to use the pacifier more often. Stop that baby from crying. 
All right, that's all I wanted to do for now. Uh, watch for the next uh, issue of Operant Conditioning Notes.